Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's video I'm gonna take a look at this. It's an old friend of mine from the 80s. It's a Commodore MPS 1500C color printer. And this is the printer I had back in the day when I used an Amiga. And yes, I bought it around, uh, I think, 88 or 89. And it uh, was uh, quite good at that time. And I used it a lot uh, for my school assignments and uh, yeah, printing out photos on the Amiga. That was really fun. No one could do that. <laughs> and when I say no one could do that, of course, I mean that uh, none of my friends or anyone I knew had this kind of printer. And, uh, uh, even <laughs> few of my friends had a computer and none of them had an Amiga 500 like I did. I don't really remember what happened to the printer I had. This is not the one that I had. I'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, either I sold it or it was uh, broken and thrown away. After that I have never seen or come around uh, this printer and uh, then, of course, when it showed up uh, on uh, fin.no, I had to get it. And yeah, I didn't pay much for it. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's working or not. That's obviously one of the things we're gonna figure out in this video. And with it, I uh, got the parallel cable that can be used with uh, the Amiga. And it also came with this uh, tractor feeder mechanism. This printer can use uh, regular sheet paper or tractor fed paper and it came with a user manual so that's really nice to have this video is sponsored by PCBWay and if you need to have produced uh, some PCBs uh, yourself like I do regularly then you should visit the PCBWay.com if you visit PCBWay.com, you can get an instant quote on uh, very good quality PCBs for uh, affordable uh, prices. And if you have advanced needs for PCB manufacturing, then check out their advanced PCB options at PCBWay.com. I haven't done any printer videos in this channel except for uh, a couple of uh, those small plotters that didn't uh, work or their pens were <laughs> dried out so this one looks okay it's quite dirty has a lot of uh, scuff marks uh, but uh, otherwise it is in good shape this paper feed mechanism you can take off it's uh, broken here so I have to glue that back together but besides that I can't see anything wrong but on the underside there should be this uh, stabilizer foam and this has totally disintegrated and uh, makes a lot of uh, dirt. So <laughs> need to get rid of all this and maybe put something else under it. This of course is to avoid uh, vibrations while it's uh, printing. So this is a matrix dot matrix printer. That means it has this uh, print head that uh, shoots out needles and uh, this ribbon cartridge is uh, the ink. I'm gonna see if I can remove it. Uh, there was a trick. <laughs> yeah. There it is. So it's a color printer and uh, that means that it can print almost any color and uh, it does that by uh, providing R, G and B and a black. So this uh, color 
ribbon is uh, four colors and you can turn it around and then it turns around indefinitely until it is completely dry. And down here there's a label MPS 1500C compatible with IBM JX80 technical level 00, zero and a large serial number. So I doubt they produced over 5 million of these, but maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if this color cassette is still usable. Let's see if I just rub it against uh, some white paper. Yeah, look at that, there's still color in this. <laughs> So if you want to insert some paper, you just uh, take up this lever here, push the paper down until it's uh, a little bit down, and then down with that lever, and you can roll up the paper and start printing. So uh, yeah, I'm a little bit eager to see if this actually works or not. So uh, I'm gonna hook up uh, an Amiga and uh, let's see if we can print something. Here's an Amiga 500 and I'm uh, the old school guy. I like to use the old media floppy disk, even though I have Goldtex and everything that I can use with this. It's always fun to use the original hardware, even though it's noisy and uh, takes a while. If you have followed my channel for a long time, you might have seen this uh, Amiga before. I recapped it and cleaned it in uh, October 2019, that's a while back. All right, we're in the workbench and if I remember correctly, we need to go into uh, this printer here. I haven't fiddled around with printers and uh, Amiga since like say 1990. <laughs> so here we are in the printer settings and uh, yeah, here we can select the printer and there's already won Epson JX80 and uh, yeah and uh, wasn't that the same that we saw on that label it says IBM JX80 so either <laughs> I made this uh, workbench diskette with this printer driver or it came with workbench I don't remember maybe some of you guys remember the only other we can select is generic or custom then we have the paper size and uh, yeah here in Norway we use A4 but I guess that's uh, almost the same as US letter we can of course select custom paper type let's select single and uh, quality letter and there's some other stuff here so I'm gonna use and to print first I'm gonna just use uh, notepad uh, note that I haven't uh, actually connected the printer yet okay we're in notepad So let's see now, can we print this? Print, yeah. Print as auto size. So since I don't have a printer connected, it says printer trouble. <laughs> Check printer and paper. All right, now I'm gonna connect uh, the printer and let's see if it works. Hooking up a printer back in the day was a little bit more involved than today no USB or Wi-Fi or anything. Then this one goes into the parallel port and it quickly becomes a cable mess back here. I have some paper in. Okay, it moves. Nice, so the motor is okay. It says on and it has three uh, buttons here. First is local, then it's line feed and form feed. Yeah, you need to push down that local first and then you can use the other two. Nice, it works so far. Does it print? 
Let's see now. Print auto size. Yes, it's printing. It printed, but uh, not a lot of visible text. <laughs> so I guess this uh, color cassette, it's not in. I forgot to put it in. Idiot. <laughs> Sorry about that. No wonder it didn't print. Let's try again. Yes, look at that. <laughs> this printer works just fine. Look at that. Let's see now if we can make it a little bit more stylish with this uh, beautiful font and uh, another color. Okay, it didn't print in color, but uh, the font is correct. All right, now I just uh, selected the... <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear me. <laughs> I moved away. I, I used the graphic dump program in Workbench. Let's uh, check it out. So now it's printing a screen dump. All right, look at that. <laughs> nice, although not in color. So I need to figure out how to print uh, in color. I think there's a trick to it. I just don't remember. All right, so I'm just testing uh, this page setter program and uh, that's a program for uh, creating uh, pages, obviously <laughs> newspaper pages and uh, yeah, brochures and things like that. And it works just fine. I just printed the, the thing and it came out as I <laughs> expected it. Okay, so this printer has some settings that you can set uh, when you turn it on. And uh, yeah, if you hold down line feed and, and form feed and turn it on, it goes into setup. I'm just using the same uh, paper sheet to uh, save some forest. So it now asks you, uh, what kind of uh, setting you want to choose and the printer emulated you can uh, select uh, another but I'm gonna go with the uh, default Epson JX80 so I push line feed and then it asks for character set Denmark that sounds fine type of ribbon colored that's correct Automatic sheet feeder, no, that's correct. We don't have that. Double strike printing, don't care about that. Character definition, near letter quality, that's fine. Spacing 10. Yeah, and so uh, it goes on like that. And if you want to change a setting, you select the uh, no with the form feed button. So let's say I want to select no for the paper end detection, then I push uh, form feed and it will ask for the next option. So there's obviously yes and no here and I'm just selecting form feed again to go back to yes. Yeah, so that was it. Now let's reuse this sheet on the other side. Now let's try Deluxe Paint 2 and see if we can uh, print some graphics. So here in the preferences I have set uh, shade to color. Now it was on uh, black and white. Here's a reference palette uh, image that came with Deluxe Paint that I opened now. So let's try and print this. Print. So 
So we're going to print in color, normal orientation, print. Oh, need to insert the workbench. Oh, it seems like it's still in that uh, settings mode. I just stopped uh, the print job, uh, no need to print the whole picture. And uh, yes, look at that. There's colors. <laughs> but uh, seems to be something wrong. There's a lot of uh, lines between each uh, row here. And uh, yeah, that doesn't look correct. Yeah, I just tried to use that uh, graphic dump to print <laughs> workbench. Uh, yeah, but still uh, those uh, lines, spacing between each uh, line and uh, I'm not sure why that happened. I need to figure out that. That doesn't look too bad, <laughs> considering this is a printer from uh, the 80s. And uh, yeah, I changed the emulation in the settings to IBM Pro printer. I know it printed without uh, that uh, horizontal spaces between the lines. So that's the original. Yeah, obviously this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, the black is uh, starting to uh, wear out. So it's for the most part gray, but uh, there is still some colors here, so yeah, I think this looks uh, absolutely nice. <laughs> Brings back memories. I used to deliver assignments uh, at my school with the, the, this printer and I always made the first page with a, a picture or something. All right, uh, that's enough with printing for uh, this video. I have proved that it works just fine. And now it's time to uh, take it apart and take a look inside and see if we can uh, improve it a bit by cleaning and uh, lubricating something. Okay, let's see now. <laughs> it's not obvious how to uh, open up this printer uh, because there are no screws. There are these holes, but there are no screws. And uh, yeah, on the side, there's a couple of uh, tabs sticking out. So I guess it is just clipped in with uh, those. Yes, seems like the whole thing is uh, coming loose then. But on the other side, there is uh, no tabs, but I guess it just locks in. So need to take this off. Just need to be careful not to break anything because uh, old plastics break easily. Yeah, there's uh, these uh, tabs sticking out on the inside on this side. Okay. I think we're there. Yay, look at that. And there's some cables going to the buttons and the lights. Oh, it's just a thing that you push a little bit out and you drag it out and the ribbon cable came loose. And on this side you have just a simple connection for the ground. So now we're good. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. And uh, yeah, there's obviously some dirt and dust here and there so I'm just gonna try and clean up as best as I can what I was actually hoping was that uh, I could take off the lower <laughs> part of the case this big black plastic so that I can clean off uh, the underside but uh, that seems to be a lot of work if I'm gonna do that I have to take off everything so I don't know much about how these kinds of printers work I can see it has a small 
PCB here. Probably some ROM and some uh, microcontroller uh, running this. It has two motors. Here's one that's driving the roller, paper roll, and uh, that's the one that drives uh, the movement of uh, the print head. This is the transformer and here there is a cover, this black part. It is loose, but I think it's just clipped in and not possible to get out easily. So it seems like the whole printer support at the bottom here is uh, one piece of plastic and the roller are, and the things here are pressed down into the plastic frame and can't easily be removed. But what I can do is to take out uh, the PCB, just take off these contacts and uh, there's a couple of screws. This was a little bit stubborn, but it came out eventually. Okay, now this is out. Yeah. This uh, metal bottom plate has been uh, pressed down into the plastics and these rivets are pushed and those rivets will need to be cut to take this off but there's no reason in doing that. Maybe if I take off the motor I can remove it. Is it just held by this metal clip here? Yeah, it is. <laughs> There you have one powerful motor. The other motor seems to be just uh, held with this uh, clip and the screw. Just try to keep all the screws uh, and uh, try to get them back into the printer in the correct order. Okay. Still not happy. I got it, you have to turn it around to get it clear of uh, the plastics. So that's the other motor, it's the stepper motor and uh, Minebia Co Limited. It's a 12 volt motor, 70 ohms, made in Japan. Now let's try to remove this whole thing here. Yeah, I think that's loose. However, the cartridge and this arrangement is of course uh, fitted into this uh, <laughs> groove here. Yeah, look at that. So hopefully I can make this fit back together again <laughs> later. So now it just hangs on the belt. The belt is of course fixed to this some way. So I couldn't figure out how to take off and release the belt from this part, but uh, I'm not gonna do any more uh, disassembly because I'm afraid to break it or I might end up not being able to assemble it again. So what I was hoping was to get uh, the bottom plate out and uh, be able to clean it real good with uh, my power uh, high pressure washer. But uh, I don't know, this layer of some uh, foam, it's completely disintegrated and I wish I could take it off. Uh, I guess I just have to use uh, some elbow grease then and try just to remove as much as I can. So it seems like it's just glued in. I can actually remove it with my finger. <laughs> Yuck. I 
I'm gonna take the whole thing down into the tub and uh, clean it with the water and then I'm gonna try and remove uh, that filthy layer of glue with some uh, steam. I have a steam cleaner I can use. After using this steam cleaner, um, yeah, all the gunk is gone, but uh, the glue remains. While the printer is drying, I'm gonna take a look at the power supply and the PCB, and uh, yeah, you can take off the plastic covers just by prying it on the sides. Okay, there it is, just a big fat transformer and a couple of, I don't know, uh, capacitor there, plastic. And that's it, I'm not gonna bother with taking this out, uh, then I have to take off those contacts down there. So I'm not gonna do that, just gonna leave it, it looks uh, very nice. The PCB, <laughs> yeah, looks very nice, I checked this is a uh, 78. 10 kind of a microprocessor uh, it has 64 pins i have never seen this arrangement before where you have uh, two rows of uh, 32 pins on each side this is uh, a rom it's uh, 27 uh, 256 regular one other things i haven't checked everything looks to be neat and clean i'm just gonna clean away some of the dust that that are on this PCB here and there. Just using the good old IPA alcohol. Just mopping up all uh, the dust and dirt. So that's much better. Just gonna clean the contact with some uh, contact cleaner. Yeah, and this is a 70. 805 uh, voltage regulator with a big heatsink. Backside just looks uh, perfect, nothing there. Interestingly, it says uh, made in Italy and there's not a single Commodore label on this. All the caps look all right, nothing uh, leaked and nothing is bulging, so. Uh, yeah, I see no reason to replace those as of yet. Okay, that was it for uh, the PCB and uh, all the cleaning. Now I'm just gonna assemble the whole thing and uh, lubricate a few moving parts and then it's uh, good to go, I think. And I'm gonna do a final test, obviously. Okay, the printer is now assembled almost and I have uh, cleaned all the old grease on the cog wheels and everywhere. So uh, what's remaining now is just to um, yeah, lubricate a little bit. I'm gonna use this uh, silicone uh, spray. Just apply a little bit and it will distribute itself. Also on this uh, metal bar here, I'm applying just a little bit. And this part here was also full of old uh, grease. So needs a little bit of uh, lubrication there. The case came out really nice after cleaning. Uh, yeah, I removed all of the black marks. So I'm just gonna see if I can assemble this. <laughs> if it's as easy as taking it apart. Before I put the case back into its place, I'm just gonna do a little functional test, see if this fires up. Yeah, it does, and the uh, LEDs are lit. 
buttons work. Yes. Okay, then I'm happy. Let's see now. Push it in from the side. Yeah, that was easy. The knob goes back. And we have this cover. Uh, by the way, these covers you can take off. Uh, that's for uh, mounting uh, the, uh, the tractor feeder. Is it called tractor feeder? <laughs> Strangely enough, uh, the plastics hasn't yellowed. This is the tractor feeder or uh, what it's called. Uh, this is if you have uh, th this uh, continuous uh, paper with uh, these perforated uh, edges, you can use this and uh, then you never have to uh, change paper. Otherwise you can use this. I haven't cleaned it up yet. I will do that. Um, it goes uh, like this. <laughs> you can also get the automatic sheet feeder for this, I think. But this is the manual one, so you have to turn uh, the knob to get the paper. Let's see now if it still prints. I'm gonna run the setup routine it does obviously i need to insert um, the color <laughs> yeah all well i'm pretty pleased with that no this printer looks just great and can actually be used from time to time. All that remains now is to get this layer of glue off. After that steam bath, um, all um, the remains of the foam uh, disappeared, but uh, this uh, glue is still attached. So uh, that's a bit of work to get off. I don't want to use a lot of chemicals for it. So I'm just going to peel it off. It comes loose, but it takes some time. <laughs> And uh, as usual, I forgot something. <laughs> this ground cable obviously needs to go into the printer. I'll put it back in a minute, but for now, let's just make a little test and then this video is uh, finished. Yeah, look at that. Very nice uh, art of me there. <laughs> and that's on the screen. All right, that's it for this video. The printer works just fine and I'm happy with that. It was a lot of work and cleaning and a gunk, but it was worth it, I think. So by that, I just want to say thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time. And a special thanks uh, to my Patreons. Uh, see you, bye bye.